everything's working. Hopefully, sounds coming through, guys. This is the 81st episode. Good evening. Um, let me go straight to the uh, sponsors quick. Uh, let me give my shout outs to Ultra Spec Cable, who's now expanded over into Europe for you guys that uh, any of your cabling needs. Uh, shock from the MK community and uh, summoning uh, run the company. So hit them up at uh, ultraspeccables.com. You got mkserver.russia. You got Beefu Techie. You got Awesome Smack. You got MKU. Yes, even VXG for all you folks that are hating. Combat Network, Empire Arcadia, Mad Cats, Mortal Kombat Online, MK Bible, MK Mortal Kombat Universe, the Gamers Edge. Go to Gamers Edge if you need anything to do with telephones, cell phones, computers, game mods. They got it all. GamersEdge.com, uh, Pro, Pro PC Gaming. Uh, put that back, of course. Uh, Chris Bond over there. Uh, hopefully, makes a a, a resurge. Um, you got Deadly Venom, TRMK, and MKMP. Okay, Chris, I'm gonna be late. G. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, obviously, people have heard uh, AGE has now officially folded its uh, fighting game division. Um, Makes you wonder what the deal is with esports. Um, apparently, esports is not. Uh, what is this portrait of you? Uh oh, what is this one? Oh, Leatherface. That's Leatherface, man. I'm used to that one, Limbo. Um, but yeah, uh, now that AGE is uh, folding their uh, fighting game division, saying that they're looking to get into esports, I thought the fighting games were supposed to be part of esports. But apparently, I'm wrong. So, um, you know, like I said, guys, it's uh, it, it's looking like it might be a E.G. Chris G. down the road in the future. He is one of the top players, and he's a pretty damn good salesman. I don't know what's going to happen with Fnatic and the rest of the guys' romance, but uh, I wish him all the best luck. Hopefully they can... Uh, uh, sounds good. Okay, we are going to add a Jamaican to the call. Yo. Yo, what's, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you fine, my Jamaican connection. What's going on, man? Not much, not much. Working like a dog, but... <laughs> We're getting tons of fucking snow here. I can see you're getting that powdered snow, that ski resort snow. It's like a footload of it I've heard over there in New Jersey. It hasn't even, it hasn't even, stopped. It hasn't even stopped yet. Wow. Um, Chris, if I see you in the chat, if you want, hit me up on Skype and get in here. Uh, I'm sure that you have a few choice words that you might want to share um, <laughs> with the whole AGE thing. Um, again, guys, I don't want to blow this thing up out of the water, but I do have to say what's happening to esports because it looks like it's slowly imploding. Hmm. Um, or at least imploding as far as for the fighting game scene. Um you know, it's 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 sad because the business side of it is the business side of this. This it's not that profitable for these companies, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of people want the money, the money, the money, the money. But if they're not making the money, why are they going to do it? They're not going to do it just because they like you all. Um, but you know what it is is it's a wake up call for everybody. Start looking for a J-O-B. Yep, you have to have that secondary game plan. Or should I say, make this a hobby and make getting an actual job your primary game plan. <laughs> now, another thing that I want to touch on, because we're going to hit on that a little bit more later. Um, damn, I was fucking just texting. Voice. <laughs> and it must be trying to type all that shit out. Um, you know, uh, a couple of people had mentioned that... Uh, I'm coming back to Twitch. If you do go to the Twitch website of old, the On Blast show, it does come up and it does not say banned no more. I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to say or confirm or not confirm that it's going to happen because last time I opened my mouth, it didn't go through. Uh -huh. um, so I'm hoping that. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that it uh, it does uh, go through, and I'm going into Hugo Chavez mode, as I like to call it. I will be, <laughs> I will be streaming not only on Ustream, I will be streaming on Twitch as well. 
Um, speaking of that, guys, OBS Melfix, Melfix, um, who's been an OBS member for a while now, um, has opened up a gaming channel on Twitch as well, which is OBS Gaming. So uh, be sure to go check that out if you guys want to. Uh, if you want to get more of a gaming side of OBS, it's not going to be a talk show. It's basically going to be a place for people to get together and actually game while streaming at the same time. Um, you know, and he's running it. He's got full reign of it how he wants it to go. And, uh, you know, I wish him the best and I support it 100%. So give him a follow, OBS Melfus X on Twitter. And uh, go check out that stream as well. Um, I did speak to Chris, and he's giving me, I, I, and I guess so. Mm -hmm. So hit me up, Chris, when on Skype. And we'll get something. If, he, if, if he's gotten any confirmations or uh, possibilities of it not being as uh, dire as it apparently the press releases are sounding. Um, you know... DJ Scrubble, I wouldn't say they're backpedaling their hate for me. Um, <coughs> and I wouldn't say they're cocksucking bitches either. They're my friends. Um, <laughs> I love Twitch. Twitch is great. Twitch rules. Uh, now, in, in all seriousness, um, you know, time's gone by. I think, you know, they've started to see the show for what it is. And they started to see people um, that come to the show. And I think it's a... Good business move on both parts. I mean, I would like to be partnered back up. This way I can give more money to charities. Because, as I said from the beginning of this, I do not use any of the money from my pocket because I got a regular J-O-B. Unfortunately, I really don't well, want well, one. Well, uh, J um, James, um, you ever watch The Big Lebowski? You yes. know that famous line? <laughs> Which, Maybe that's why it twitches all of a sudden. You know, just say <laughs> Wait, well, rewind that because I, I know the Big Lebowski. I don't know the line you're referring to. Remember, we're it's on, up, we're, we're on it's your stream right now, so you could say it. It's about the money, Lebowski. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it, you know what? At the end, it's it's like, you know, I've talked to some people over there, and I've made some leeway, so. And it's been 40-some-odd weeks, so. <laughs> no, it's about the money. If it was a so-called principal stand, they would... <laughs> you know, I mean, like I said, it's 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 not uh, it's not something that uh, I'm gonna sit there and, and sugarcoat and say there wasn't obviously bad bloods. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh god, hold on, you know who's coming on? Alex <laughs> Alex Panther. You remember Alex? I'm trying. Yes, I think I do. Luigi's I Mansion. Yes, I do. I remember the guy. <laughs> uh, hold on a second, guys. I actually have a call. You take the mic. All right, so uh, I see uh, some regulars here. Mm -hmm. um, Mav fan and grow and uh, uh, lots of folks that remember their names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it seems that yeah. Um, my thoughts on the whole thing, how it's developed so far is, well, we know. Let's be honest. Um. I'm not sure I blame AGE for cutting down, closing down the fighting game part because you know what? It's about the money. <laughs> and t shirts and pads were probably not moving to the level they wanted them to move. All right, I'm back. <laughs> so, um, Limbo, as far as the tournament for 2013 14, I am going to do a couple of them. Unfortunately, at my lazy ass, I have the trophy for the Crazy 88 sitting right over here. Which I haven't sent out, sent out the door yet, because I'm just a lazy bastard. But um, for uh, for uh, the '88, the trophy is here. I just got to get it out the damn door already. Um, but I am planning on doing a couple of tournaments for uh, 2014, um, and actually going to give something a little, pretty cool away actually for the winning team. But I'm not going to announce that yet, and that's not even going to announce what games yet. Um, Unfortunately, games like Marvel can't really be done online, but some games like Tekken, Soul Calibur, mm -hmm. uh, Street Fighter early versions can mm -hmm. be. So we're going to do something. We're going to put something together. 
Um, I'm supposed to send that trophy to Napalm, Felice. So hopefully it goes to Napalm. Uh, you better go to final round so we can drink it up. Abe, trust me, I'll be going to final round and we'll be drinking. Um, <laughs> and you know what? I'm also thinking about doing a Smash tournament as well, guys, just so you know. But, you know, that actually I want to hold something offline at an event where uh, I guess maybe it could be my version of a curly stash for the, for the, for the Smash community. I want to put teams together for it and see if, they, if, if, they're, if that group of guys are interested. Um, obviously, Apex this week. Um, big disappointment for myself. Who is this? Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chris G, what's going on, sir? What's up, Chris G? What's up? So, uh, did you get any words of anything? Or, I mean, did anybody mention anything to you yet? Uh, well, it's pretty much what I wrote on Twitter. I did not see. Uh, oh. Let me check that out for you. <laughs> I wrote that I, that I, I heard from from you and Event Hub. I mean, not Event Hub, Shoryuken.com. I wrote, I'm just glad that Shoryuken.com informed me that AGE is being dropped. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's a surprise. They didn't tell you. <laughs> she said that uh, she attempted to call me several times and also sent an email. Right? Now, there was one call. Right, but that was many times, and the email was at six thirty nine. Oh, that's an, around an hour. Yeah. So I'm well, gonna, I'm supposed to check my email every hour now. I, I definitely <laughs> not know that. So, what is? Wow, I gotta see what this is now. I see lots of stuff here. I'm, now we're going through your stuff. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, to be honest, Chris, I know you want to go off. Um, no, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, else. I wouldn't suggest you going off for the simple fact that, look, you know, shit happens, and it's just ironic we were talking about it in the car like two days ago. Um, and, you know, it's, it's something that if you go nuts on this, the next sponsor might look at that and say, hey, you know, this guy's a fucking pain in the ass. Why do we want to deal with them? So you got to think, you know, quote unquote, is try for us. Think to the future. I, mean, I, you know, I have to agree with that. You know? I did. I did speak to her just a weekend before, and she was telling me like what I want, and she said to let her know. And as soon as I let her know, the next thing I know, you're fired. What? Hmm. Like I just spoke to her. From from how you describe that, that from my experience, because I have worked other jobs before, that's pretty unprofessional. They usually give you a little warning before they just say. Psst. Like no, it, it, was literally, it was literally as simple as I'm I'm going somewhere. Let me know what you want, what you what what your problem is, everything. We're gonna talk this out, and boom, done. Yeah, that. Hmm. I, I don't know if I should say this. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But that that sounds like disorganization to me. It that, does she sound disorganization. Yeah, she she sounds like she didn't even know what's going on. So that's how it sounds to me. But from what you were saying, Chris, that seems like a norm there. So <laughs> yeah, and then, and then the last statement was what actually I I found pretty offensive was uh. I had no legal obligation to even notify you. Wow. Well, that's that contract work for you. <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, theoretically, yeah, she is kind of right with that. I mm -hmm. mean, it, your contract was up, right? Yeah, I guess so. So if your contract's up, they don't have to tell you shit. Unfortunately, that's the whole point of a contract, to lock them in. But, uh, you know, it's... It sucks. I mean, it sucks to have it happen that way. Um, again, like I said, I, I implore you not to go Twitter nuts like I usually do because you'll be biting hands that could possibly feed you. Yep. Don't burn any bridges. You know, and I know, you know, I know you're obviously upset about it, and it's catching you obviously off guard. No, I'm, I'm not even mad. It, it, that was going to happen. Like, it, it's happening everywhere regardless, the scene... Is suffering. Tournaments are suffering. 
all sorts of bad stuff is happening, and it. Uh, it, uh, it go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. We're just waiting for this stuff to happen. Like I, I knew there was problems when you didn't really hear PDP anymore at all. Like there was there was no PDP involvement in anything. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, after I mean, really, like they've they've phased down, and you don't see them really pushing the sticks like they used to. Um, I don't know if that's because after MK with their PDP stick there, and the Injustice one, it just kind of fizzled. I mean, obviously the headsets is their their main thing. I mean, her her Twitter pic, she's got some cool ass glasses. I really wanted a pair of those, by the way. You don't have them, do you? In blue. Uh, no, I got green one. Yeah, that's green arrow. Look, I don't want like I want like fucking. I don't know. <laughs> You have any low ball color headsets? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's like look, you know, you can, you know, I mean, have you talked to Fnatic in them at all? Yeah, they're all lost. We were all lost. Wow, so nobody knew. Nope. Wow. Yeah, I think you guys got the contract special, man. <laughs> and I've, I, I, I might be laughing, but I'm not laughing at anybody. It's just. It's kind of unfair, but like, that's like the way it is. The last thing I I, I I just wrote was that I was like, oh, I want to go to Comite in in Tennessee. And then, boom, you're done. <laughs> I guess she didn't respond back to that. <coughs> she told me to let her know. And I was like, all right, cool. Let me go there. You're done. Damn. No. I mean, yeah, romance has got to be like pretty fucked up right now. You know, I mean, that was, I mean, KOF was his his baby, and going to these events was like the only way he's going to be playing it really that much. I don't know how what, what his financial situation is. I mean, I hope he still keeps coming out to events somehow, or somebody picks him up. But unfortunately, a game like KOF doesn't see that many sponsors out there. Um, they seem to be primarily looking for Capcom guys, which, fortunately for you, you fall into that category. So I'm sure, like I said, either an EG or, or a Mad Cats, or, or, I see possible. Mm -hmm. A Mad Cats is definitely possible too down mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but like I said, now you got to kind of step back and take a breather and evaluate things. Oh, uh, so Chris, yeah. Uh, uh, unless this is praying, you have any backup plans? Um, yeah, uh, go to West Coast. That's it. <laughs> I, got, I got I got money saved up. Oh, that's good. I, I, yeah. That's a, I, I, that's good. That's good. I always keep a backup plan because, as you know, shit happens. Yeah, <laughs> I I already said I was gonna move. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is a, a weird turn of events, I guess. But I'm still going to go with what I said I was going to do. So, I mean, hopefully, let's see what happens. I mean, I would wait, like, I don't know, at least four or five months. I mean, I still got to go. So that's the thing. I'm I not, know. I know. I would say I would wait. I, wait. I would wait a couple of months, you know. Stay where you are and do your thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, the, the, scene, the scene isn't doing so well. You know, but my whole thing is to... to if the scene isn't doing so well, and that goes across the board everywhere, not just East Coast, it's East Coast, West Coast, just the games in general, to uproot yourself and just, you know, move to the West Coast as the scene kind of seems like it's slowly collapsing or as Triforce says, being burnt down, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that, you know, you want to be at least where you're in a position that you're still in your environment mm -hmm. you know I mean I, I understand this you know me personally I would try to line a gig up first before you go don't worry I got League of Legends oh you got yeah. League of Legends League of Legends money the millions the billions <laughs> not millions they're on the billions yeah but unfortunately no. Chris what level are you uh, do you have a team uh, yeah I got everything yeah, the team, everything. Oh, I, wow. I got, a, I got a Ryu knapsack. <laughs> oh, you're oh, you're going to wander the world of LOL. <laughs> you're just going to walk around walk around barefoot with, looking around for a team? 
I mean, uh, like I said, I would if I was you, I would you know just make sure you got something lined up solid mm -hmm. before you just jump because you don't want to jump there and this ain't to, I don't give a fuck and you know I've told you this a million times I don't give a fuck about oh well Chris goes there the East Coast ain't gonna have them I don't give a shit about that you know I'm just worried that like if you go there and you know again I'm not dissing certain people I'm just saying in general people make promises shit falls through and now you're sitting in the West Coast living off of what you used as a savings with nothing coming in, and eventually your savings become nothing, and you're going, fuck, what do I do now? I'm stuck in Cali. Yeah. And oh, then I'm going to see you fucking hanging out at Venice Beach and shit, like doing fucking Marvel fucking soulfish tricks for money and shit. <laughs> soulfish tricks. <laughs> soulfish. <laughs> oh, man, I, I'll be good. So, so you're sure you say you have a strong enough backup plan, or so you, at least you have an exit strategy, just in case shit hits the fan more. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, I guess the main question I'm having is, all, a lot of us observing what we're seeing in the fighting game scene, right? We know for a fact that the fighting game scene. Unlike StarCraft and LOL, with those games, I think I was talking with James before about this, is that it's StarCraft and LOL, the only people who watch StarCraft and LOL are the people who play those games. You don't really have people who don't do it. But to their advantage, there's a lot of those guys. There's millions of those guys who play and watch those games. I don't know if the FGC has that type of thing to save it because you know better than anybody else. Anybody who new to the FGC, if they watch a match, they're not really going to get hyped because they barely understand what's going, what's happening. So they wouldn't care. So yeah. I think that's kind of what's stifling the scene more than individuals or anything like that. It's, that. it's just the nature of fighting games make it hard for people who are new to it to get interested. <laughs> so are, are fighting games going to go back to the days where it's going to be Back is are is the FGC going to just fall back to what it was in the old days where it's just uh, things that people do as a hobby, not really a esports type thing. What do you think about that, Chris? Who knows? Um, <laughs> honestly, I wish there was an arcade again, an arcade <laughs> scene. You know, that was where everything truly competitive came through. But I don't know. No, no one knows. Apparently, Triforce knows, so you know someone should ask him. <laughs> <coughs> oh shit! Um, <laughs> I mean, look, you know, it, the scene is never going to go back to that point. I mean, if you look at Super Arcade, you know, it's that that business model can't work no more. Um, I think I agree with you on that one. You know, why am I going to go spend, you know, quarters in a game at an arcade when I can do the same thing at home with the same damn game mm -hmm. at home and play somebody online and it costs me 30 bucks and I own the game. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, it's sad because that, that interaction that was in the arcade is not there. We now have this detached, you know, social media slash keyboard warrior mentality going on now where you can tell people to go fuck himself mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about any repercussions where in the arcade days if you did that you might get smacked you know and it and I've said this numerous times on the show it was a dingy environment even Chinatown was still a a dingy environment like if you were to walk in on the off the street in there with your girlfriend you would probably say, you know what, I don't want my girlfriend here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, might have been the nicest bunch of guys, but that's just the environment that, and, and the stereotype and stigma that's always gone with arcades. You know, so now, you know, to bring that back, I mean, you can bring back that watered-down Dave and Buster's version, but you're not going to get that arcade feel. Everybody wants to get their redemption prizes and win themselves some of those plastic little spiders for 200 fucking tickets. Mm -hmm. Hey, I actually got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, the, the scene, 
you know, with MLG doing their thing and everybody talking the esports thing, I don't know what's going to happen anymore. That's and I've been saying that from day one. Um, what do we got here? I I don't know, James. I am not. I'm not going to say I don't know what's going to happen. I just I'm just looking at it from my perspective, right? If the way that fighting games are, and I'm just using analogies, like I try to bring my friends into fighting games. And it's pretty hard sell because we might be used to it, but we have to understand fighting games are pretty difficult to get into. Legitimately difficult to get. We have the years of experience when we're used to certain things, but to get new people into fighting games, no matter how easy or dumb down we make them, it's pretty hard. If there's any fi if there's any fighting game that's probably going to do well, I would have to say is the Smash games, especially the new ones, because those are simple to get into. Yeah, but it's still not going to. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's still. I mean, you're not going to have an arcade full of Smash games. Right. I don't know. Arcades are dead in the, the form you're talking about. Yeah, they're gone. Maybe, maybe, that that's never going to come back. That's dead as dirt. Maybe you could try the thing like what they do with Japan, but. That's kind of a long shot too, because that's a different type of arcade culture. So, yeah, I, it's 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 not. I mean, the arcade scene in general dead, gone, never coming back again. <laughs> um, Virgo, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? How you doing? Doing good, you? man. What's yeah. you today? It's been a weird day today, man, with the snow and teams <clears throat> folding. And yeah, it kind of sucks for me because actually, because uh, I work at a hospital, so I have to actually go into work tomorrow, even with the you know ten of twelve inches of snow. Oh, but shit. um, you know, I gotta take care of patients. You know what I'm saying? So you know, there's people there, um, not doing too good. You so mean I you're in the FGC and you have a job? <laughs> well, I haven't been really into like the tournament scene. I actually been playing since I was thirteen. So, um. You know, my local arcade, I lived in Harlem, so, and, you know, most of the local arcades, of course, was flooded with arcades, you know, bodegas, game stops, um, well, not game stops, excuse me, but, but like random game stores throughout um, in the Harlem area, and, you know, they always had arcades, and they had their own little Pacific crew and stuff like that, so, you know, I was like, kind of like a, you know, road warrior myself, as like, you know, going to different arcades um, throughout the city and, you know, playing all different type of people. Um, the funny thing also too is uh, Glitch, who who is um, a part of uh, Always God, like he's been like my rival for like 15 years. Um, and, is this you know, the same Glitch who's the Rufus player of Memory yeah, Serves? Yeah, yeah, that's him. And so I know him for years, and you know I'm, I'm I feel very you know relieved for him to be able to be in that type of level of gameplay, you know, as of like being in a tournament scene. But um, for me, I tried. Um, I was I was like that type of guy where um, I felt like I was hot shit, you know, because I was so <laughs> young, you know, I was very young. Um, Fix your mic, with... Mike. Hello. Hold on, hold oh, on, Mike. Somebody's mic's feeding back. Mute your Is mic, me? Mike. Not you, no, Mike. Oh, okay. All right, you better. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I used to play with grown men, you know, drinking forties, and I was the youngest kid, and. <laughs> Um, they were very strict too because when you used to throw, they used to like fight all the time because throwing yeah. took a lot of like a lot of damage. Throwing oh. was bad. Yeah. Throwing. No, I no worry. That was in Jamaica too. I've I've seen people, I I've known people, known gunmen who used to play Street Fighter, and if you threw them, they weren't going to shoot you. But they said, no, no. I thought we were playing no throwing. They walk away and leave. <laughs> <laughs> throwing was <Yeah>. bad <laughs> universally. Yeah, yeah, yo, throwing was really bad, man. Like, <laughs> yo, like one mistake, like you probably didn't want to do it. Usually, also too, what happens if if you killed them with the throw, it was even worse. So you yeah. couldn't determine <laughs> whether if it was a mistake or not. Well, usually if they threw mid match, they just kind of would be like they would do the throw up oh, and they would throw their hands back and be like, take my take your throw back, man. Take your throwback. Yeah, take your yeah, throwback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what it was too. Because if you didn't get that, you didn't give them their throwback. There used to be guys who were like, "Fuck you! I'm not, I'm not gonna give you my throwback." You know? And yeah. A big fight will happen in an arcade, and oh man, it was crazy. But what was such a blessing was to have like four different fighting games in one, like one room. It was just like 
insane, you know what I'm saying? Like you was able to play like Treasure of Adam and X-Men vs. Street Fighter and Soul Cow and, and you know, all these different games all in one roof and Mortal Kombat, man. And it's just, it was just insane. I remember the countless days I cut school to play Samurai Showdown and, oh. and Pick of Fighters, <laughs> man. And, oh, man, it was just insane, dude. Was you it know. that old King of Fighters where you could jump in the background? Yes, yes. Yeah, how, 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 many times, how many times have you gone and your boys were like, yo, they got like Mortal Kombat 3 up at this bodega on 175th. You, yeah, go, up there, you go up there, you go up there, you go up there and it's fucking Galaxian. And wow. you're like, motherfucker, I came all the way up here for Galaxian and shit. Yo, dude, Mortal Kombat 3, when it came out, like, it was just so yeah. huge, man. Like, in art, like in, in school days, it's like very huge. Like, there was this one arcade that only had it. I don't know what the hell everybody else was. Everybody was strung up on Capcom, of course. Mm -hmm. But there was this one arcade. It was, I think it was like a, a candy shop. And uh, they had Mortal Kombat 3. And, I mean, it was just packed. Quarters just lined up. It was just insane. So, I, I, can, I can truly say, I, you know, Mortal Kombat. I mean, no, I heard Mortal Kombat 2 was, like, pretty much some people's favorite. More than anything still else. Mine. Uh, one still mine, but only because of the originality. And I think had they stuck that route with those graphics now with the technology and filming, yeah. that yeah. shit would have looked amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. A, a, you, you, a, HD versions of those characters would have been great. Yeah, it, it, it would have definitely have, you know. But um, my love for arcades go a long way. I, I've, I technically was on 42nd Street for God knows how long. Um, I worked at Broadway City Arcade. I worked at Excess. I worked at Laser Park. Um, I worked at Port Authority Bowling Alley. Um, and I was only working there because of the arcade. Port Authority Bowling Alley. Holy shit, I forgot about that. Yeah, PA. So I, I've been part of a lot of crews because I was like bouncing back and forth because sometimes the scene would die. So I went up going to somewhere else. So, you know, um, I just know I know a lot of people from the arcade scene back in the day, so like all the old school heads, you know, um, definitely remember me. But um, I wasn't really a Chinatown head because when I definitely went to Chinatown, because uh, a classmate of mine from high school, uh, he invited me to Chinatown Arcade, and I was just like, what the fuck is this shit? I just was getting my ass kicked, and I spent mad money, i tell you that much. I was, I was those dudes who would probably constantly keep putting quarters in the machine, and <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, and I'm spending like twenty dollars because the same guy was beating me. Cause I just couldn't believe how <laughs> the level of intelligence of gameplay was totally different from the actual. I I really was considered a casual player, you know. Even though I was playing like constantly every day, like I'll come home from school. Um, there was actually an arcade right down the block, and what was cool about that arcade on 14th Street and 8th Avenue is called Video Gangsters, and there used to be like eight different schools in that area. And they will all migrate to this one arcade. And I think that's the time when Third Strike came out and Marvel 2 came out. So I'm talking about pack, pack, pack. It was pack. Like How many years ago was that? I'm trying to remember when Third Strike came out. Man, I'm feeling very old now. Yeah, I feel old, remember. man. I'm 30 now, man. And it's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. The time has gone by, man. But it's, it's probably like what? Uh, I want to say 99, 2000, I guess. I think so, you know. Yeah, I think it's gotta be about nine, yeah, ninety nine. I would think. Yeah, like ninety nine, two thousand. Yeah, man, and shit, man. But the arcade scene, I loved it, man. I was an arcade baby, dude. Like, I, I, I remember my first time was in Forty Second Street when, like, the Ed Koch era, like when prostitutes and and <laughs> and, and pimps were all. <laughs> you could face. go, you could go do a dragon punch and get a hand job in the back. Yeah, right. You know. So, it, yeah, man. Thanks, Third place prize. Third place prize, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I feel bad for this generation, especially for Chris G, because Chris G, you know, phenomenal player, you know, very all around. I give him props to any other player. Um, you know, he's just a phenomenal player, dude. I don't know if he's still online while listening, but yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's still there. Yeah, man, I'm giving you props, man. You know, I don't care what anybody say about you, you know, but you, when it comes down to it, you're a very good player. And I hate to have to see that you have to get shitted on by companies who just see fighting games or just gaming in general for a, a, like a cash cow. And you get caught up in the middle of it because, you know, 
you know they don't know how to use you or they don't know how to like treat the you know um, treat you the way you should be because of of you know of your status as as a gamer and you know I hate to have to see that happen to you man I I really wish you the best of luck man honestly is I know it's not easy I know it's not at all and I hope you the much much most more success you know in your in your career man well I, I think Chris G would like the most more sex indeed. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know my accent too, man. You know I got the accent sometimes. I, mean, I got like a down south, like you know, West Indian accent. So sometimes my my words kind of mumble a little bit. But yeah, I, just I, I, I know it's most in your balls, man. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let me, uh, let me, Mikey, you there? Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't expect you to call me so quick. Yeah, well, you, you ask, I, I make it happen. And then we got Mr. Dichotomy, Jason. Yo, what's up, man? Dichotomy, man, you there? Get your mic working. I don't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Now we hear yes, you. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, just over here examining these uh, schisms, and I had to put y'all up on some game, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I see, you know, we, like, you, you messaged me about it. You know, Big E's looking to branch out, which is a good thing. You know, I mean, look, at the end of the day, and I hope I don't put ruffles in people's feathers, but, you know, in my opinion, he's like the godfather of the tournament organizers. Mm -hmm. um, I like the way he does things. He puts things into perspective. He keeps things real 100% all the time. And uh, let me add one more in there. There we go. Six people's enough for now, people. Um, yes, we got big words for you now. All right. So all you guys, keep your dichotomies, your schisms, and the apparatuses in check. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, the fact that he's out there branching out to other, to other scenes themselves, going into the, the first-person shooters is, is going to be a good thing for him. Um, I'll go down there to support that as well. I mean, I don't care if it's, you know, a matter of me just getting blown up in a game. I'm still getting to go to Philly and get destroyed and drunk again, so... It's, I'm always cool with that. Anything to support him, he does a great job with the scene. Um, also, now I also want to let you know, Lord Knight, you there? Hello. What's up, sir? How you doing? I'm good. Oh, I'm good. okay. So, how did everything uh, turn out at the end of the day for you at uh, at Apex? Uh, I didn't leave until like 6 a.m. <laughs> I was supposed to leave at like midnight. What? Were you playing Smash or something? <laughs> or, were you, or were you playing that cat in rock paper scissors? Because that was some OD shit. I played him. I played him right after after I won BB, and it was like, it was close. It was close. It was close. I lost though. Uh, Chris, how did you fend? In what? In rock paper scissors. Oh, uh, I lost, but I made my money. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> You know what was funny? Justin got bodied, and, and, then, and, then, and then and then went to coin coin flips, oh, yeah, and, and was and was and was bodying, and then he took his money to, and ran. I was like, <laughs> so you're saying Justin's good on the fifty fifties, but the not 50 like the one or the threes. Yeah, <laughs> he's got the fifty fifties down. He he took care of business in the in the coin flips, but actually, didn't you beat him, Chris? Yeah, I beat him like four times in a row. He he made money from the other dude. He was happy, and then you played him and took it. So you actually should have been making out. <laughs> I did. So, so Chris, what was the combination? Tails, tails, heads, or no head, head, tails? Well, I, I went, I went double tails, and I switched <laughs> up a head. Oh, oh. <laughs> Dirty. I didn't know coin flips were an option. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, I was I was paying attention to the weight di distribution. Oh. <laughs> Wow, that hidden tech, man. <laughs> Who would have thought this actual tech to pick in the fucking heads or tails? Yeah. <laughs> so what else uh, What else as far as the event? Like, how did you feel the event went overall? Like, it was good. Uh, oh, crap. Never mind, you can go. No, I thought no, it was good. No, it was night. Oh, oh shit. For him. You what? Lord, I'm not used to being called night. Right, Lord, like, well, who's night? Lord, Lord night. Lord night. <laughs> No, it was good. It was good. It's like 40 minutes away from my house, so I could just like head over there. And I used to play Smash, so I got to catch up with a lot of people, which was nice. I also met a lot of people, which is always nice. The tournament ran well. The tournament ran well outside of, uh, I guess, there was drama amongst the the melee organizers or something. Because okay. they're, ar they're arguing over the mics. They were trying to 
they were trying to DQ people who were playing in other tournament matches instead of playing their melee matches, and they're arguing about it over the mic. So everyone was like, "What? What is going on?" So that that was kind of bad. There was more drama than that. Yeah, that because they they had to take it off the mics because everyone was hearing it. They were saying it over the mics. Wow. So that was that was kind of bad. So they almost DQ'd someone I know in the BB tournament. I think a couple of people in Injustice almost got DQ'd. Um, also, but they were able to sort it out though. Yeah. Cause, cause you know what happened? Because Armada, if I'm correct, Armada was in top eight of one Smash tournament and Grand Finals of another, and you can't DQ this guy of out of like Grand Finals of this other tournament. So they kind of just yeah, to just it. wait. Yeah, yeah, they just gotta wait. Just they kind of just handled it. Um, guys are also asking if Jackson's getting put on blast today. Let's um, see why. I hope so. Uh, well, what did Jackson do? I he, didn't even hear anything about he, that. He did what he did last time, which was... He fucking bitched and moaned like a little baby. Yes, fill us in. Uh, go ahead. From, from what I know... Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to go to Apex, which was a very big regret, but life gets in the way. From what I know, Jaxel was supposed to be able to have Smash on his stream, and then he, like, he wasn't going to, and then he bitched and moaned about it, so... Not, not Smash, uh, Marvel. So then... Marvel didn't end up being on his stream. Marvel got delayed for like an hour. We were all waiting to see it, even though I was watching Smash and I was happy. And then all of a sudden, uh, Rico Suave and his opponent show up as for Killer Instinct on his stream. And then Marvel gets delayed for like another fucking half hour to another stream. And everybody hears that it was because of Jaxel bitching and moaning like a whiny baby that he wasn't getting enough views on his stream. And he wanted to show Marvel to get more views. And Spooky was getting all the, the fucking like special shit and whatnot. It was a whole fucking clusterfuck. Wow. Apparently, yeah. Um, Jaxel, apparently Jaxel was complaining that he was going to leave if he didn't get Marvel. Something dumb like that. I was actually commentating Marvel at the time. I've never commented. Oh, yeah, that too. And, and the next thing I know, they're like, yo, you got to stop. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, yeah, you and Yipes got to get up and go over there to Jaxel stream. I was like, why? They're like, oh, because Jaxel's complaining. And they, they and I can, uh, I can, I can oh, chime in on that, actually, because uh, I was there when they were doing the whole fight. Me and Min um, and John Lugo, we were sitting there, we were talking, and... Jaxel was legitimately going to grab his, grab his shit and go if he didn't stream Marvel. And he w Big E wasn't going to let him use any of his equipment at all. And that's why he ended up never never streaming anything. Wow. <laughs> stream Killer Instinct, though, for a little while. <laughs> he, he didn't, he didn't want to stream He didn't want to stream anything because it was, he wasn't getting numbers with whatever it was he, wa he was streaming. I think he was streaming Brawl, wasn't getting the numbers. And then cut Brawl off for like two hours. So like anyone who was watching it, all of a sudden now was watching a dead stream. I knew it was Jaxel's fault from the second I heard Yipe say the words uh, in, in quiet to Chris over the mic. I don't, uh, we don't want to start no drama. And the first thing I could think about was like, this, is, this has got to be Jaxel's fault. Because I, <laughs> I, I knew that Marvel was going to be shown on 8-Way Run stream. I mean, I, 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 I don't know since I wasn't there. I, I look at it I, this way. I look at it this way, though. There is a pecking order amongst uh, yes. streamers. And that is true. it goes Spooky, Beefu, mm -hmm. everybody else. In no particular order. <laughs> um, and that's just the harsh reality that if these guys don't want to accept the truth, then. Just look at it and say, well, who's the first person everybody goes to when they want to stream? Mm. Spooky. Um, you know, and then if he's not available or if they're going to have two large streams, they go to Beefutechi as well. And then everybody else gets brought into the loop. Now, from my assumption, at that point, every streamer is offering a service. They're, they're selling me a Big Mac. Mm -hmm. Or a Whopper. Mm -hmm. And if I want a Whopper, I don't go to McDonald's for a Whopper. If I want a Big Mac, I don't go to Burger King for a Big Mac. Um, but at the end, it you got to satisfy your customer. And, you know, when I hear something like this, I'm like, you know, Jaxo, man, come on. You know, uh, you know, why would you complain you got the job? You want to keep these guys bringing you in. I understand you want to get money, but... Aren't these guys getting paid? 
Oh. But the thing is, the way I look on it, James, my bias is I talk with Jaxel too. So I, I'm not going to say anything because since I wasn't there. So I don't know what Jaxel's side of the story is. So, you know, we're only hearing one side so far. That's all I'm going to say on that. And, I'll, and, I, and I agree with that. And I'll, you know, if, since your buddies with him, reach out to him. I, I don't know if he, I'll see if he's on here. I'll reach out to him and see if he wants to come on and actually discuss this. Yeah, get him on. Get him on. <laughs> I mean, I don't think Jaxel's a bad guy. I don't either. I don't either. No, he's I, actually a really nice guy. Yeah, I, I, th I think he's very, very envious of like Spooky and Bifu for how well they get treated in the stream community. Yeah. Like, there, he wants a... that money. I, I respect that, but you gotta remember, Spooky and Bifu, they they fucking busted a lot of chops to get where they are. Yep. Yeah. That's the third, Yep. But I do agree with James. There is a pecking order, and maybe, maybe favoritism is involved. Who knows? As I said, I wasn't there. Well, so, there is no maybe. That, that, the, 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 let me tell you something. If I like a, a a Big Mac and I go to McDonald's and they're like, "Yo, we ain't got no Big Macs," I'm gonna go get a Whopper at Burger King. Not because mm -hmm. I want to, but at this point, I just want a burger. Now, if you can't get what you want. Then you go to the next, you know, the next, the next best next thing, thing, the right. next best thing, and right. then you work down the line. Now, the fact that these guys can't get along, apparently, I mean, and, and again, I don't want to, you know, somebody else messaged me saying that he was going off today. Um, I didn't actually follow up on that because that was in between everything. But before I do that, Noah, are you there? I don't hear you, Noah. Oh, is um, Lil Noah again? Yeah. Oh. So, everybody PG-13. PG-13. <laughs> PG-13. <laughs> Whoops. I want to see... Uh, you guys continue to talk about this. I want to see if I can get out to him. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of things as far as Jaxel goes that are behind the scenes that... He's, he's saying, he says a lot of things that... If you talk to Big E at any of his events, he can go into it in a lot more detail, but he... He basically like blatantly lies about a lot of stuff that he talks about on the back end of it, and that's why people don't like dealing with him. Mm. And that's why. Hold on, let's see. Here we go. Connect. As I said, you guys, since you actually live in the area, so so I'm going to be very careful and remain mum because again, I don't know all the facts. Right. But um, I guess while we're here, um, Lord Net, what's your feeling on Coco? Would she be unfair for rock, paper, scissors? Kokonoe is... There's no rock, paper, scissors with Kokonoe. Kokonoe takes a brass knuckle and punch you, punch your fist. Like, they don't play rock, paper, scissors against her. Dang it. <laughs> wow. That's, that's not how that works. That's Wait, did, that works. Hold, hold, hold on. Okay, do you feel that that character should legitimately be banned? Do you if, feel if, it, if they ban she, her, if they ban her, okay. If they don't ban her, then I'm going to play her, I guess. Like... <laughs> I, so is she is she like HDR Akuma or she's like super turbo Akuma? They're, they're both. It's, the same it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's like it's hard to say. Like she she should have been in the game like three versions ago. That's how I feel. Like she's not a BBCP character. Like if you play the game a lot, you can kind of you can kind of tell that like Arxis has a very specific intent of what they want the game to be mm -hmm. and then kokonoe is like they forgot to put her in a really old version of the game so they put her in this game oh that's so just that's just how that's what it feels like when i play her like she doesn't play oh, like okay. the other characters so that's oh. that's why she's like that's why she's so good yeah that makes like, sense she, fe she felt like she was legitimately tacked on she, it's not like she's tacked on it's just like why are you doing all this with all these other characters? And then you're like, oh, remember like three years ago when we had all these type of characters? Here you go. Damn. Like, like, like why? Why? Well, I heard from my experience, <coughs> when you do that, you either get a character like Lobo, which has issues, or you get somebody who's as retarded, like Coco. <laughs> like, she, she, like, I don't think a lot of people really know how good she is, but then at the same time, I mean, if they don't ban her, whatever they ban her. No, no. It from I saw, sense. from I saw the black hole, just the early black hole stuff. When people say, eh, right, I knew yeah. there was a problem. Whenever you, have a a whenever you have a character where you have zero options to get out of, you're going to get into problems because people are going to find more there... tech around that. <laughs> yeah, but 
did, has anyone actually exploit you know explored the game enough to where you you can say okay there's no way to get out of it I mean that that game hasn't been out for a long enough time for us to say okay this character has to be banned because there's legitimately no way to break it no I well, think I, I think Boy. the <coughs> whoa hey there he is. you're there all right yeah, there he is. what's up hey, Noah? Noah hey <clears throat> what's going on huh? you going to uh, SoCal SoCal Regionals, yes. You're going to body some people or what? Yeah. <laughs> Chris G, you going to SoCal Regional? No. No? No. <laughs> what? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you running for Noah? Um, he's very scary. <laughs> <laughs> he attracts attention. That's too much. Too much attention. <laughs> So, Chris G, you're ducking Noah? <laughs> so now what you're saying is you're not even going to go to SoCal now at all, period. Well, see, see, if he goes and he gets bodied by Noah, then how are sponsors going to sign him? Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah, somewhere else. Sponsors are going to sign Noah instead. So you're going to go, like, you're going to go play in that tournament in Boise, Idaho, huh? <laughs> that six-man that six tournament? Here it is. I forgot. Six-man. The six-man tournament in Boise, yeah, Idaho. Like Cutthroat Con or something like that? Which one? Cutthroat Con. Cutthroat Con. Cutthroat Con. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good name. I think it's uh, I'm gonna be with Happy Medicine. Mm. Wow. Huh. It's, so Noah, you heard the game plan. If you want Christy not in the tournament, just show up and he'll, he'll start dodging you. <laughs> 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 But okay, back to what you were saying though. Like, do you, you were saying like, I was asking if people explored the game enough to where you think it's completely, you know, unable to get out of that stuff. What do you I think? I mean, I mean, okay. She, they, not everyone. Well, okay. Originally, people found stuff, but every time you find stuff, you're going to find answers to that, mm -hmm. too. So right now, I think. She can beat almost all the options. Almost all the options the opponent has. A, a lot of people are talking about like the, the infinite block string, but there already is an answer for that, but there's probably an answer to that answer already. So like I'm saying if if they push block or sorry, is it barrier barrier block not, as a No, it, you have to barrier instant block because that, that's like the best defensive that's like push blocking without having to hit a button. Like, wow. Like, that's like push blocking without um, an attack coming out if you mess up. Like, that's what it I meant to say. Like way overpowered. It's hard. It's not easy to do, though. And you can't just, like, focus oh, on probably doing... probably instant block plus instant, barrier. Instant yeah, instant block, block per plus barrier gives you... Uh, I don't know if I should go into this technical stuff, but... <laughs> in instant block plus barrier gives you the advantage of barrier, which pushes you really far away. And then I the advantage of instant block, which gives you more time to move. Free to work. And with, then... Yeah. Also gives you a little bonus, uh, excuse me, bonus pushback a little bit, a little bit extra if you do both at the same time. That so, it, it definitely sounds that they never thought, at least the guy, the guys who made the game, they never thought that, they never saw the potential strongness of. Um, they had to know. They had you to don't know. Think like, so? <laughs> they 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 know what they're doing. Like they they added they added two other. I guess is it two? I guess it's two. Yeah, they added two other um, new characters in console, and the one the one guy is like probably the worst character, and the other guy he's just like okay. So why? No, that's why, that's why I'm saying I don't that's, think they that's why, knew. No, that's why I, I think, think they, they knew did knew. know. <laughs> that's why I think they did know. They know exactly what they're doing because it'd be easy. It'd be so easy to make her like still really good and fair. Oh, like, pretty so fair. you're it's saying really easy. I could tell you like three things right now that would make her like fine. Like, oh, you're right saying. So you're saying the Blaze Blue system, the way the game works, they could have easily not had these issues with this character. Yeah. And it spotted it out in testing. Yeah. Well, I'll take your word for it because and, you're and way the better. People, the game. And the people like who work for the company are all like like their main spokesperson, Pachi, he's like a he's like a former SBO champion. Like it's not like he wouldn't be able to find out that like some of this stuff by himself. Like uh -huh. it's not that hard. So you so, you, you, so you think he pretty much knew? I think they had a good idea. They should they should have known. So my big question is, why on earth would they do that? Well they well well this this character is like super popular. 
right? Because you have to remember, Arc is like Japanese company, so mm-hmm. they their main priority is their the main demographic for them are Japanese people, like mm-hmm. Americans and like the world are secondary. And that's right. what, like, that. access and stuff handles. So, what are you saying? We got to sit in the back of the bus or something? <laughs> we don't care. We don't matter. We we don't matter as much. To them. No, I think they just because because who because who who puts the money in our arcade machines? Not us. No. It's them. <laughs> it's them. We don't play. We we're the ones who buy console and the DLC and shit. We don't. We can't do shit for I'll buy arcade. It for, for I'll them. buy. I'll I, buy I, the digital download for fifteen dollars, not seventeen dollars, not sixteen fifty. Fifteen dollars. That's it. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. no, but, I, what, but she's like, a really popular character. So like they keep adding the the real thing that's fucked up about Arxis is that they push like the story mode. So I remember like a couple years ago. The only complaints for like SF four and stuff were was like there's no real story mode. So Blaze Blue had a story mode that people mm-hmm. like. It, has, it, it it was a compelling enough story. It was it was kind of shitty, but I mean it's a story mode. Like it's there compared to other fighting games. Come yeah, so, <laughs> it's only just so Kokonoi, beats Kokonoi has been in the game since like the original game, the very right. first game. Kokonoi has always been there. So, but Arxis always adds these random fucks. Like, like who who the fuck is Azrael? Like if you play a story mode, like he just he didn't even exist until this version. They're just like, oh, check out this guy. They just add a, random fucking characters. He's a so pretty people, fun character though for a random one. They kind of, <laughs> they kind of blue ball, they kind of blue ball everyone yeah, for Kokonoe because every time they release new characters, people always ask for Kokonoe. Now they ask, now they add Kokonoe and she's like, she's busted. All right, so you're, are you telling me they in a fighting game basically Kokonoe is the equivalent to what Bleach writers do in the magma, like? I don't. I don't read that shit. So I don't know. No, that's why. I say, that's, that's, what I say. that's how. What? That's why everybody hates Bleach because whichever Japanese fan girl likes this character, that character will never die. So there's no suspense. <laughs> so you tell me they got the Bleach treatment when it came to writing. So they say, all right. That's not true for all mangas. No, no, there are good mangas. Bleach is just bad. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I I would prefer they ban her though only because I want people to just shut up because it's really annoying. Like I hate the Kokonoe jokes. I hate like there's a Twitter account called Brokonoe. I hate that shit too. Like <laughs> I wanna just go away. I wanna just all go away. So now let me ask you this. Do you think it's something that should be nerfed or buffed? Or do you think it should just be if you had your way, would you eliminate this character or would you try to repair it? Oh, fix it. Why not just? Well, I understand why they're not fixing it, but they should fix it. They should definitely, definitely fix it. Like it's gonna be. I don't know if you guys follow the brawl, but she's Meta Knight, essentially. Yeah. Okay, that's bad. Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's, 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 that's bad. That's like, bad. like she really, she really is just going to be banned eventually. Like I don't, I'm pretty sure. Like it's, we're just kind of. It's probably gonna be on the fast track though, instead of taking like two, three years. Probably because that game is slow as fuck. That's why it took three years. Hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, three years, Noah. I, I, I never thought it would be you, LK, to break the PG thirteen rule. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody, you know, everybody looks to me to do that. I, I screwed up. I screwed up. <laughs> no, but um, the thing I'm looking at with this um, the Coco Noe issue is that you know, eh. The reason why uh, somebody brought up if there's truly no way out of it, we have to remember we live in a YouTube age, so we think of it like a fancy processor. We are able to test out theories of how broke something is pretty fast now. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, I, Honestly, if I was that guy who found the Blockstring Infinite, I would I would have saved it for Evo. Like, I would not have told anyone. Yeah, I would have saved that. I would have boxed, yeah. boxed, yeah. boxed that up. I would have boxed that up. I would have gotten blown up. At, I would have gotten blown up at every tournament from now to Evo. <laughs> I had to save it and for them. Just <laughs> destroy everyone. They would, thing- they would put me in a horrible pool, and I'd be like, oh, man, you know, I'm an old dude. Come on, you know, just be gentle on me. And then I would pull that out, and I'd be like, hold that. Because you, you understand the black hole, right? Like, that moves unblockable. Yeah. Yep. So that, dude, that, moves, that moves unblockable, and then... It has a guaranteed fall damage. Like when you hit the ground, it has a guaranteed damage of 1200. So the reason why they do those 70% combos is because they have like, they do this double one frame link. That's not a real one frame link with the fall. It's just the so fall. you could block string. So the thing with infinite block strings, like you could block string <coughs> this 7,000 damage combo pretty much mm-hmm. for free. No, no, it should no. be for free, but it's not for free. 
no, the, the thing is, yeah, I always, with a game like, even though, relatively speaking, compared to other fighting games, Blaze Blue is kind of fast. Compared to other fighting games, right? I guess. Like in Street Fight, right? You always have to be careful when you put these unblockable moves in there. Even if they're a super, you have to be very careful. I mean, Carl Carl has unblockables, but it's not like... That's what it's, it's just It's just... It's really... It's really hard to say. I, I just... If if they banner, they'd be really nice because then we could just stop talking about it. But ah, now I remember the term. So Coco Noe got a plot Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Noah. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, so Noah, do you think Coco Noe is broke too, or you don't play Blaze Blue? Uh, uh I don't. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Well, there we go. <laughs> and it's because, <laughs> it's because of the brokenness. So going back to when you were talking about, because uh, I, I came in when you were talking about the arcade stuff earlier. So like, this is actually kind of a good example of like if back in the art, back in the day when we had arcades and there was somebody broken, we just dealt with it. Yeah. In this day know. and age. Yeah, that's what everyone's yeah. saying. That's what everyone's saying. But then, at the same time, we're we're in like a modern age. Like it's not the arcade age, you know. Like, like if 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 say hypothetically, Coconut doesn't get banned. Mm-hmm. This is the only thing, this is the only reason I'd even want Coconut to get banned. Say she doesn't get banned. There are like, there are going to be like 20 really good players all playing Coconut at EVO. And it's going to be a Coconut at top 8 guarantee. Like, I promise. So, so, so what so happened cool. when I was... I promise. Or 7 Coconuts and 1 Valkanai. Someone play Valkanai. So does no, everyone I... forget <laughs> when EVO had Tekken 6 and we saw, what, 7 out of the 8 players in top 8 play Bob? Bob And, Rio. and, and there's that also, there's also that thing like, like, because... They didn't have like I don't think we were in the sponsor slash esports age back then. You remember Melty Melty died at Evo because of Kohaku Mir Grand Finals. And that was just two grand finals. That game died after that pretty much. No, it did not was, die that the, after that. was that the real reason for it dying That's though? One of them. That's one of them. A lot of people who played on the side was just like, okay, Koku Koha I almost said Kokonoi, Kohaku. <laughs> Kohaku all day. <laughs> Hey, the Cocos, man. The invasion of the Cocos breaking them games. And everything. Like, it would be... Like, I I am fine with that. I am fine with that. All oh, Coconut in top eight. <laughs> and then at the same time, how do, like, sponsors feel? Like, because you, cause you want that, that good... You want a good feeling from the spectators. Like, you want a good reaction. You want people to think it's, like, hype. Like, last year, P4U or KOF a couple of years ago, or something like that. You want people to be like, oh, it was hype. It was so hype. Oh, my God. Not, like... But I, I don't know, L- L- Lord Knight, Chocolate Fudge, the sponsors. I, if I, a regular stream monster, sees a, <laughs> if a regular stream monster sees uh, a top eight that's filled with cocoa, Cocos, I bet you money they're going to stop watching it. Maybe. They're going to watch something else. Unless, they might watch they like the first Coconut. time for the novelty. But if they well, see it constantly happening, like they'll watch. I don't I know. No, no, but nobody wants to watch a mirror match, though. That's that's the thing, and and, and most of us as players hate playing mirror matches. I come across it all the time in Super Turbo. I love mirror matches. I don't know no, why I, people hate them. I'm like, I want because I know you hate them. That's why I want to do them. Because I want you to be like, don't use the same guy. I want. I'm like, now it's a matter of who wins first round. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a little bit different for me. I play Honda. No one likes watching a Honda Honda mirror match. Oh, I no, love the oh, matchup. buddy, watch. It. Oh, I actually I like that. It. I like that match actually. I like. I, I, Honda. I love playing it, but I, I I can see why people don't like watching it. Yeah, it's so, I mean, boring. No, no. The thing is, it's not watching one mirror if it becomes a trend. So let's say Evo have a top eight for Coco's. People watch it because it's funny. They see Coco rubbing on Coco, and it's like, Ew. but <laughs> after that. When they see it locally happening all the time, people are saying, "Screw this!" <laughs> you know what let I mean? me let me do let me do this, guys. Hold on one second. Let me. I gotta drop this call because the Skype window's not actually up, and people are asking who's on. So I want everybody oh. to see who's on. All so right. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna call you back in a sec, guys. Guys, bear with me for one second here. They, I think sure. they, I think they figured that. Uh, sorry, no, I just hold your ears for a second. Um, I think because of all the stuff that goes on on PlayStation now, they're kind of like, oh, James, really, James really wasn't that bad, was he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, remember what I said? It's about the money. Wait, 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 wait. I just looked up right now. It said this channel has been closed. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I know. He's on Eastern. I know. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. Uh, little Noah. I don't know. The, the guys in chat are making me laugh. Coco for Coco strings. Uh, it comes, oh, it, 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 it comes up, but it says it's flag. We're back up, by the way, guys. So, so Noah, keep your potty mouth down a little bit. You get, we're on a PG show here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for chocolate fudge sake, man. <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right, so now I can now I can see everybody. All right, we're good. All right, um, yeah. So I mean, we'll see what happens with that. Like I said, I'm not gonna jump around and scream success until I actually see it. But I did get an email, so. Um, and, and while I'm at it, guys, I'm gonna throw this out there. Um, as you guys have noticed, I've been smoking my uh, my vapor here. Um, yeah. so, I mean, anybody that's interested, I just threw up the link right there, the steam company, the, the steamco.com. Um, these guys got me hooked. They got my smoking down to a pack every four or five days. So, um, a pack? that's a big movement for a guy that was, wow. for the guy that was smoking two or three packs an episode. Um, so definitely guys go check these guys out. Um. Let me throw my camera in this too. I'm going to give a really good advertisement for these guys because they deserve it. Yeah, man, I wish I had bought me this um, the I mean, set, man. I mean, this thing, I'm telling you now, I, you know, coming from a guy that, you know, when I was working in game development, on any given day, I could do five packs in a day. Jesus Christ. Wow. Jeez. I meant Jeez Louise. I was just going to say. <laughs> um, so, she, oh, wow. You know, so, I mean, the vape, I, you know, this thing, you know, I guess it'll keep me alive a little bit longer, so. You know. Hey, you'll be busting windmills again. So, <laughs> I already can do that. I proved that. I Everybody got to hold that. I want to see. I, the only person that I'm worried about breakdancing against is Jago. That's yeah, he's been, he's been in the, he's been he, in the and, lab, man. And he, and, he ain't, and he ain't stopped. So, anyway, yeah, guys. He, do, he does it in the hallways at the events. I watch him dance. So, anyway, guys, the steamco.com. Go check them out. You know, they'll hook you up with the vapes. they hook you up with the oils. You know, I got the... Uh, the, the gentleman's reserve for a gentle man like myself. And, <laughs> and I got the blueberry as well. And then I bought some cheap ass, cheap but generic banana thing, which is now ready to go in the garbage. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's definitely helped me wean off of the cigarettes without a doubt. Um, last week, I think I smoked twice during the show. And, you know, that's just because I think I'm used to it now. But I keep hitting this thing, and I'm good to go. So the steamco.com, check them out. I'm hoping they uh, hook me up with some uh, promo codes to get you guys some discounts soon, too. Anyway, back to you guys. Boom. All right, so. Uh, um, so who was uh, going again? I'm trying to remember. Uh, Are we still talk, talk about Coco? <laughs> No, no, we're day. talking about mirror matches in general. Mirror matches? Oh, mirror, mirror yeah. matches can kind of kill the vibe. Do you, do you want to try playing Kokonoi mirrors with me right now? No. <laughs> what, why would I want to? What's that? First, first to get black hole when you win? First to get hit. That I'd rather not, you know. Actually, actually, you could do a reversal against a black hole and the game starts to slow down. Drastic. Damn. It's really funny. Looking. Wow. Now, like like PS3 Marvel slow down or worse? Yeah, it's it's bad. Oof. I refuse to play Marvel on PS3. So, so Chris, bad. Chris, what do you think about mirror matches? Mm, mirror matches. Like I don't know. I like... actually I actually enjoy them. You enjoy them? I know. Like in any game I played, I don't really lose mirror matches. I, I guess the bit. Uh, sorry, Chris. I guess the better question: Do you enjoy watching mirror matches? Depends on who. Ah, oh, good point. Like if I'm watching two guiles, I mean that's that's self-explanatory. I don't like watching Just Along versus Ricky and Graham finals. Oh, wow. I, was oh. Say that. Shots fired. I can't stand yeah. those two playing. Do you guys. like watching Chris G and Ricky, or how about Sanford and Ricky in Graham finals getting six out? Yeah, that was godlike. Watching I love watching. Yeah, that was amazing, man. Yeah, I was there, man. I was, oh man, I was so hyped. I felt like justice had rained down from the heavens when Sanford won that 6-0. Yeah. And the look on Ricky's face was priceless. He was pissed. 
<laughs> Yo, he he went he went back down to sit. He was sitting next to to Eduardo uh, PR Rog, and he's like, "I've never played that matchup before." And Eduardo's like, "Just sit down. Uh, when we get home, I'll show I'll show you some stuff about that matchup." He's like, "I've never played it before." He was he was livid. Hey, Chris, what what did you did think care. of that match then? Or you didn't see it? Um, that was fantastic. Because yeah, no, honestly, the truth is I, I never I, I didn't think it would be that bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 I was thinking, you know, Sample was still going to get dive kicked at least one time and then lose a game. The thing is, everybody likes seeing a beat, though, to be fair. <laughs> Yo, but it went so fast, though. It was like, in a matter of 20 minutes. minutes. 12, it, 20 was, minutes. It, it was 12 minutes. But Jesus. Let, let me just ask, really that if fast? it's out there, um, yeah. was, was that actually Sanford or was it more... Uh, Ricky's lack of matchup knowledge. What do you guys think? I think it was lack of knowledge. I think. I mean, was, six though, it would have to be, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it have to be? It, I but, think it's a combination of both. I, I, I would lack, say the lack same of thing. Knowledge and and sa to be That's fair, Sanford, Sanford can pick score. up on stuff. Yeah, he picks up on stuff. Now, Sanford that, made, I mean, Sanford made really smart reads though. Like if yeah, you go back did. and you watch the match, there was a lot of stuff where it was just like. He would try to go do a dive kick, and he did the uh, that down up the the down palm, the shuriken with the kick. I don't know what the what the move's called. I don't play the character, but yeah. like he would do I that. He, called, he he was doing like you know ex shuriken where it looked like oh that shouldn't work, and all of a sudden it worked. Like he made really smart reads in that entire match. And we and also have to remember how, every single thing. Yeah, and we also have to remember how uh, um, Rufus works. Rufus has a vortex type kind of game going on with him. With either, am I going to dive kick you or I'm going to throw you? So, Sanford had to, as you rightly said, Sanford had to make reads to get out of that. Because, he, you know what I mean? If he DP'd and Ricky blocked it, that would have been on his ass, wouldn't it? Yeah. Ricky, yeah. Too, he's too I mean, used to being aggressive, so it's like kind of hard to be aggressive and then he's getting countered all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so it kind of like, you know, put him in, in that state where he had to kind of hold himself back, and then he just get, get kept getting pushed in the corner. Once he got in the corner, forget it. Like you know, Sanford was just going crazy. That that because as looking at the characters just themselves, you guys are more experienced fighting game players, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. But just looking at what the characters Rufus and Oni can do, I think it's a pretty even matchup between those two characters per se. Uh, or you don't agree. Uh, no. Well, well really. matchups aside, from, from, you don't really see uh, Ricky getting mauled like that that often. You're the one mauling. That is true. Yeah. You never see Ricky get mauled like that. Never. All, all credit to Sanford, though, but I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. just to a point where, like, Sanford, like, like, just got one hit, and he was already doing, like, 14-hit combo. You know what I'm saying? But Rufus... <laughs> couldn't really do that with Oni, you know what I'm saying? Like, mainly what uh, uh, Ricky was doing was just like jab into like EX, uh, the spinning move, and that was about it. That's all you would see. But so, that, I thought like he would never... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But, oh, um, for, I, I don't know. From, like, from my perspective, first of all, I, I play Oni in SF4, and I hate the Rufus matchup. Now, it's not to say it's bad, but as an Oni player, I can't stand dive kicks. I mean, yeah, that's Oni, what, that's what I figured, is, too. Yeah, his sure you can is probably the second best in the game to Seth, <laughs> but I hate dive kick characters. And the problem is Oni's wake up game. I don't know how Sanford does it, but he makes Oni look like he has an incredible wake up game. Oni can a wake up. So if Rufus is doing EXIO, I haven't found something to solve it. And I would love to get Sanford's insight on that because I can't solve that. But I didn't see Ricky do wake up EX Messiah once to get out of it. No, he did. He did. Yeah, he, 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 did. Tri he tried it. There was, there was a difference. He tried to do it, and Sanford countered on oh, it each did? time. Yeah. Like, the, the Messiah kick went over his head. Mm. And he oh, that's right. That's whenever yeah, that's when I figured suffering. out that Messiah goes over. Yeah. I didn't a, know it went over. Yeah, he was stuck in a corner. And did, yeah. uh, I'm watching the match again, and I have not seen Sanford miss a super. Like, none. 
<laughs> Your surfer was going in on the deep. Well, no, when you mean super, you mean super super, you mean ultra. No, he means the ultra. He only okay. hit the he, the, he ended oh, it. He suit. ended it flash. He ended it with super, yeah. Right. No, the thing is why I think the matchup is kinda even, because Rufus was never uh what you call it now, a big combo type character that does damage. You know, he takes his damage in quick little spurts. You know what I mean? Correct well, me if I'm wrong. The other the other problem is Rufus has really bad stun. And Oni does a lot of stun. Oh, damage. I see what you're saying now. So, because you, because remember how many times uh, after one combo Rufus got stunned, and that puts him in the, the um, the Fudge House. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fudge House. I like that. <laughs> but um, like, I just never seen Ricky get so demolished in my entire life, and I've been watching Ricky you. play for so long. Hey, it happens. No, I do agree with you. It It happens. No, I agree with you because I I agree with you. It's a lack of matchup knowledge. And Sanford is good at picking up on habits. Because, like, remember when we watched that thing where he challenged PR Rog? And he noticed PR Rog was (laughs) throw-teching. And he got Tiger uppercutted for every time he throw-teched. So, he's good at making those reads. (laughs) He's good at making those reads. Now, now here's the thing. I I don't know if anybody here plays Sagat, but... Mm-hmm. How bad is Sagat versus uh, Rufus? Because Sanford got blown up when he was playing Sagat. I think because Sagat has a slower DP, so you can't really use that to get out of problems. Uh, that may be Apparently true. Sagat wins that matchup. Mm-hmm. Does he? What, Chris? Apparently Sagat wins that matchup. You think Sagat wins the matchup? Yeah, apparently 6-4. Oh, could you enlighten my darkness to it, though? Because I'm, you know, I'm not a big... Uh, standing roundhouse every jump. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can react to the dive kicks. I mean, he has he has to get in all the time. Oh, he has to get in all the time. Guys, well, what about, I guess what about, I got guys, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Jaha, you there? Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's going on, man? First time on the show. Uh, I've been on here once before. For you were on yeah, once, I remember that. Right, yep. <laughs> That's right. Coming to start trouble. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know, trouble. that was that was on my other channel. Yeah, before you got, you know, man, deuced out. So what's up, everybody? What's up, Jaha? So where yeah, much? Oh man, I, I miss you on the mic, man. Oh man, yeah. A lot of people have been asking, you know, where I've been and whatnot, and where you uh, got lost in the gym or something, man. Oh, uh, I'm do- I'm still doing that, you know, doing that, and uh, you know, just growing in life and stuff like that. And I uh, kind of put FGC and tournaments kind of low on my list. It's just a lot of fuckery going on. Hey, and forgery. And kids, kids on. I'm sorry, Noah. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to put on your big boy pants tonight. <laughs> Daddy Death is on the mic. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I got to put on some big boy pants, but it's too much. It, it, you know, before I, I start, you know, uh, there's a lot of great things that you should be, you know, the FGC themselves should be proud of, you know, like with this whole remix thing, that was a tragedy, came together, raised like over 13,000, you know, and, and there's like tons of stories like that too, that the FGC does that we should be proud of, and you should be proud of, you know, being a part of it, but, um, there is like the negativity and I just I, I just can't be around it, man. Guys freaking beating on women and stealing money and just all this scumbag crap, you know, dude. I, I can't be around this stuff, man. It was uh it just drives me nuts and I'll freaking screw around and get into a fight and body somebody and go to jail or something, dude, because it's it's really I don't really stand for that kind of crap. You know, and uh, yeah, I might piss off some uh, people because you may be friends with these people, but you know, I don't really give a fuck, and you're not gonna do anything. So, what do we gotta worry about? I mean, I mean, know? I mean, look, I, I one hundred, I one hundred percent agree with you with this. Um, and the sad thing is, I understand you saying you don't want to be around for it, but at the same time. <laughs> If they feel they can get away with it, they continue to do it. And it seems like I expose one guy and then there's four more that come out of the woodwork. 
you know, I think you're going to have to get yourself a sheriff badge. You know, it's not even... But you know what? You bring up a good point, and it's something that is very... That needs... That is probably not going to happen, but I just want to draw another picture for you. There's another gaming scene um, where... I heard the story today, too. I forget what it was, but it was like some player, he pulled some BS, and... It's the LOL thing. That's all yeah, it's and it's he got banned from freaking every single... They got banned from every single, like, organization and tournament and stuff like that. So, like, what that what that tells us is that the FGC, we're like some freaking lawless third world country, yeah, where there is no freaking sheriff. It's the Wild West. There's no authority. Um, the closest thing I think that we have to an authority is, you know, the Cannon Brothers. You know, the Cannon Brothers, they, they stepped up and it's like, you know what? Collusion is, is, is not tolerable. We ain't having it. And you know what? The TOs, you know, they stood behind them and said, hey, we're not going to have that either. And, you know, pretty much freaking judgment was passed. And, and you know, now nobody, you know, fucks around with collusion anymore. You know what I mean? But, um, but other than that, there really isn't too... I know they don't want to get too involved in everything. Um, you know, they're busy guys. But, uh, and, you know, they may not feel like it's not their place. I don't know. I don't want to speak for them. Yeah. But, there, but the bottom line is there isn't an authority. So we got people just doing whatever. You know, there's no freaking, you know, dude. The, you, know, I, you talk all G, like you tapping all these girls, and then freaking somebody else is tapping your girl, so you freaking kick down the door and try to like beat on him and beat on the freaking girl. Like, that's the fucking thing to do. Oh, snap. You know? I like, I don't. I beat on the dude. The girl gets left out. Of it. But, you know, that's just both me. of them. <laughs> both of them. I'm saying really. he attacked both of them. And and that's, that, that's wrong. I don't agree with that. Look, Same re- guy reality is this. Whether you beat down the door, beat him up, beat her up. First of all, you don't hit her. And I saw when that happened how you got. Um, but either way, I understand you're pissed. Because hitting him is not going to do anything except get you in trouble now. <coughs> which is what happened. You know, and that's something that, you know, is a harsh lesson learned. But it's something that, I mean, the way I was raised, you know, I mean, you know, hold your ears, Noah. I got stabbed by a girl, and I didn't do that. You know, and if I took a knife to the chest, and I didn't do it, there ain't nobody that can come up with an excuse that's valid enough for me to say, you know what? Okay, it's justified. I mean, people have to remember that women are women are like glass. If you beat them, they're not going to come back the right way again. You know, if you know what I mean. Yeah. No, you glue it back together. It's just a broken girl. Right. You know, you, you lift, you, you raise your voice once and you're going to watch them curl into a ball, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's that's something that I've been stressing with the scene for the last couple of weeks, courtesy of the dichotomy man over here. Um, but it's like, you know, you guys label these girls and then you wonder why they don't want to stick around. And then you're wondering why you're going home with stuff in your hand instead of a girl around your arm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's something that... <coughs> needs to get like really squashed in the scene and when i say squashed i don't mean swept under a rug people just got to remember like you know treat every girl in the scene like it's your mother mm. and then you, you don't know, have to worry about hitting them I, yeah i can't stand i can't stand for that shit dude like you know what i mean we all got mothers bro you know what i mean you shouldn't be laying no hands on your women on any woman no matter what they do, that's their choice or whatever. Nothing justifies that. Bottom line, we're past that. This is old news, you know. But that's why I stand with it. No, and I, mm-hmm. there's no authority, like I said, you know. I mean, <laughs> well, if you ask me, somebody like that should never be on a stream, never should be on a mic, never, I mean, shouldn't even be at a tournament. You know, if you got to worry about that kind of behavior, like, yo, I'm going to have you at my hotel and I got to worry about you freaking kicking down doors or sucker punching somebody with a fucking boot on or something like that, you know, but, after you lose a match, you shouldn't but, even be around. But, you I, know, Jaha, I, like I was telling, uh, I was telling James uh, the other day, um, you know, we have to police ourselves. I think the fatal flaw is waiting for some other, you know, apparatus or, or institution or some third party 
to step up and go like, hey, collusion, or hey, don't fucking punch a woman. You know, that's the wrong way to do it. And then, you know, niggas get mad when it pops up on Kotaku, and, and they're trying to police us by imposing this, uh, you know, just, just a bad stigma about us, so people don't want to, uh, sponsors don't want to come in, they're trying to police us that way. It's going to come from within, or it's going to come from without, but it's going to come, you know. But if you're talking about sponsors and all that stuff, this is the same stuff that will shy them away. They don't want to freaking deal with, like, criminals, you know, uh-huh. like... No. No, I, Jaha, I, I agree with you, especially on the women beating point and the need of a central authority. Mm-hmm. But I think the, with the collusion thing, the reason why it started, I don't think the original thing which caused everybody to say, oh, collusion, was actual collusion case. If the you, collusion if you get, I mean, was made a case by the Cannon Brothers because it affected the tournament. You know what or, I mean? So they felt like they needed to get involved. You know, no, no, I mean, stuff. I'm, I'm just saying, like, what sparked it, I'm not saying collusion doesn't happen, but what sparked it wasn't a genuine case of collusion. So, I'm just saying that, but you, go ahead, John. No, 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 I'm just saying that uh, that matter was brought up because, you know, it affected the tournament. It made it real crappy. Viewers are like, yo, what the hell is this? People want to see, you know, people came to see a fight. Mm-hmm. So, they felt like that needed to step in, but... You know, as far as like illegal assaults and theft and just real scumbaggery, you know, like it's, you know, I, it won't happen, but it's happened in other gaming scenes where, you know, they don't allow that kind of stuff to happen. There was like a, a general authority, like if there was uh, like, like that full toby wan from dota you know he cast oh. and he tried to like you know he didn't want to cast a match because like you know he's like no no now nah, he's playing i want to cast them so he, you know what freaking steam was the authority and so all right see you boy you know you're out of here you're you're not doing any more freaking casting until you learn how to behave you know so he's so no, you get back in there's an I def- authority I, def- I definitely get your point but what you think about should it have been a lifetime ban or should it be like Hey, you can't go to any tournament for five, five years, or or you just want a visual penalty for bad actions. Something like that, man. Because should, a lifetime ban is. I'm a is, little more harsher. I'm a mm-hmm. little more harsh. Yeah, you shouldn't be anywhere near a mic. You shouldn't be on any streams. You know, you shouldn't even be allowed in a fucking hotel. Mm-hmm. Look what you did, you freaking dude. You you went to a hotel and you tried like kicking down somebody's door, and. You know, beating up the dude or beating up the girl, both. Mm-hmm. Why should you even like be freaking near a tournament? Yeah, it's bad press not only for the tournament organizer. It's bad press for the hotel. It's bad press for spot potential sponsors or the person that if the person was sponsored, it's bad yeah, all so around. I I'm, just, with no, I'm with I, you. I, 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 I agree with you it, because in the sense that you, you're right. Listen, there was no visual penalty for bad actions. It was just. Whoosh, no, but now also given, and, and, and again, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Does it garner a lifetime ban? Mm-hmm. Because if, I mean, I understand that's affecting the dollars of the TOs. But, you know, a lot of these TOs will look at it and say he also brings in dollars mm-hmm. when people watch. So, you know, they'll have a tendency to turn blind eyes to it. Like, you know, I mean, like. You know, let's look at, you know, baseball for an example, you know, if Kano did, you know, steroids, they probably would have gave him a stronger <laughs> ban and then, you know, with, uh, with what's his name, A-Rod, you mm-hmm. know, it's a, it's a tit for tat, well, you can appeal, you could do this, because they really don't want to lose him. It's a rule that's put into effect that reality is they don't want to enforce I mean, if they if they really enforce the steroid law in football, there'd be no football players. They'd be much smaller. That's, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's more like steroids. I would say it's more on the level of like maybe Ron Artest barging into the stands and fucking punching up a, fan. a fan. Exactly. Okay. Like you doing something illegal where the police have to show up and arrest you. That is threatening. That's not. Doesn't matter how much money you bring in. It. That's threatening. You See, know, to everything. Boy, that's meta world peace, right? Yeah, yeah meta world yeah, peace. Yeah. yeah. And he still plays ball, but it was years and years 
before you know anybody ever really gave him a shot, and he really like cleaned up his act and changed his yeah. name to freaking Metal World mm. Peace or whatever. I don't know. Hey, what the that hell. name makes me laugh so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what, to what me, are, it's his, on that level. His newfound life or whatever. As far as someone who helps run tournaments, you know I mean, I'm a, I'm a person who I rather see one and done. Like you know, if you're if you do something that's gonna be detrimental, something illegal, something that affects you know everybody that that's working in an event you should be gone for good but i also under i also am a person who <laughs> wants to see like a uh, you know the third strike rule you know you do it once shame on you do it twice shame on me third time you're you're out this is so the I mean, second time with him though because it, it, at the break you freaking suck a punch smooth viper when the guy has yeah. a freaking task on and what? breaks an arcade machine. No, 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 no. I, 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 I know about that. <laughs> yeah, very well. so this is like, you know, there's no authority. People just run rampant, man. You know, people... Well, no. well he can't I, go back I to Florida. I, I He's not allowed to go back to Florida. No, I agree with you in the sense that, but as you rightly said, if there was a central authority, so like they could examine the situation of whatever case, and then they hand on what would be the right punishment, whether it be lifetime. I get what you're saying. We need an... Uh, authority or at least something that all TOs would agree on that hey if you do this at a tournament or you do these type of things these are the reper repercussions but, you get. but now let me ask you this all right and, and I'm gonna again I'm gonna play devil's advocate this scene is we, we've com we've just compared this scene mm -hmm. to all different athletics where mm -hmm. guys make millions as Triforce says millions of dollars <laughs> um, we, as a, as a scene, some of us go to the events to make squat diddly nada. In fact, we pay money and basically donate money to Chris G's rent money. You know, we make millions of zeros. You know, millions. just unfortunately, it's only zeros. Um, but the point is, if you're to do something outside of the gaming community, like for example, tomorrow I go and you know punch somebody and get arrested for assault, does that affect me in the gaming world if it's found out? I don't think so. That's I mean they'll gossip and whatever, but we're talking about things that happen like at the actual freaking venues. You yeah. know, or things that happen actually on freaking stream. Mm -hmm. You know. So now let so. me say, let me let me say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw up this scenario. Say this transpired, and they didn't stay at the hotel or the venue at a different one. Now I'm not trying to justify anything. I'm just no, saying. No, I get what you're saying. You know, you're talking in theory. Yeah, in theory, and, fighter. Yeah, if part the, two, if, exactly. The, the actual one that's a good version. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if they Rainbow were staying edition. at a hotel across the street, and this happened. Now is that is it is it enforced there? Like at what point yes. do they draw yes. that no, 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 yes. Yes, well, definitely, definitely. Wait, I think at that point then it becomes sort of a decentralized uh force. No and, way. And that, no. And that wait, well that that would be my main critique is um always waiting for a centralized force. When we're sitting here and we have a consensus, but we're still waiting for a centralized force. You know, you you know, I what do you guys think about that? Well, mm -hmm. he here's the thing. So when, and I and I can't say this for all tos, but like when, when you're t when people say, okay, you're, here's our event. It's at this hotel, and then you have neighboring hotels around. Generally speaking, they kn the neighboring hotels know that there's an event going on, and they're usually notified by whatever the head hotel is. So if something happens, eh, I'll just use hotel A and hotel B. So hotel A is hosting a tournament, right? Hotel B knows that there's some there's an event going on. It has players that are going to that event. So if I'm staying in Hotel B and I'm a player that's going going to the event and I cause an incident at Hotel B, mm -hmm. it's a pretty bad I look should, on Hotel B. Exactly. I should I should be kicked out of the event because now it's I'm making if the event look bad and I'm making that hotel look bad. I I guess like, what, I, uh, I get I well, get what you're saying, but no, it's, it's not even that. It's not even I, that. That person, whoever whoever that person is in that other hotel, is there because they are there for the event at the original hotel in the first place. Yeah, we're That's talking in why. like third level theory right now. Freaking. Yeah, so like so, like someone said in the chat earlier. Someone said in the chat earlier. What if like like addressing something from before? Like 
what if it's something that didn't happen during the event but still in the same building it's still in the same building with people at involved in that event like anyone involved in that event when something it happens, happens in that hotel yeah. and it's in their hall so it's definitely yeah. involved when the yeah. police got to show up yeah okay, but you so, got to you yeah, do something to the point where there's a police presence that needs to come to fucking arrest somebody <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that's the point that's the point where something needs to get done but like we said there is no authority the fjc is the wild west there is no morals you know there's no there's no ethic uh regulation or anything like that and uh you know i guess that's good you know there's some freedom and there's no judgment with the fgc i guess well, but a lot it's judgment. not well okay yeah but it's just <laughs> as far as uh what goes on i guess my judgment is not okay uh-huh. and uh that's just my opinion so that's why you know i've been away personally um as far as apex you know shout outs to everybody that ran that tournament uh Spooky and Bifu, everybody is out there, and the tournament runners, organizers, you know, spent the whole weekend out there running it. Shout out to all of them. Um, love what they do. I love all the TOs and streamers and everybody that does positive things for the community. Everybody knows who they are. Um, why I didn't go was I, I actually was available that weekend, but uh, I was a little under the weather, so I didn't want to go spread Ebola virus. To everybody, you know. Ebola, damn. Yeah, <laughs> Ebola, fucking virus. So I didn't want to spread that shit, you know, because fucking, dude, everybody that gets fucking sick of tournaments, they're like, man, if you're fucking sick, stay home. And I'm like, all right, let me be that one. But well, second reason over, is that I didn't want to run into Jaxel because if I see that guy, I'm going to fucking, you know, he says the wrong thing to me. His face is going in the ground. And damn. Somerset's in near New Brunswick, so I know the police over there don't fuck around. Um, but... but what Jaha, if you do that, you'll be banned from tournaments for life. I already banned myself from tournaments, man. But uh, yeah, man, Jaxel, he's been like a fucking piece of shit, dude. Like ever since fucking his whole existence. You know, I moved back to the East Coast a couple years ago, man. And freaking, you know, I go down to the break. I say what's up to all these guys. I'm like, hey, what's up, Jaxel? I say what's up to him because I used to be a freaking like Tekken player. So, you know, it's a, it's a close-knit scene between Tekken and Soul Calibur because it's both 3D games, a lot of the same players. Mm -hmm. And uh, nothing but nice. But, you know, I'm assuming that, you know, because this guy is hearing me freaking, you know, do my little B thing or play a little B, hates that shit, you know? <laughs> I play that shit on the stream. He's like, fucking pushing his hand away pushing my hand away from the freaking pushing the mic away from me real quick and shit you know so whatever that's his prerogative and uh but never said nothing to me or anything and then like i'm in like freaking arturo's chat he's playing like some random game dark souls or some shit like that and this guy sees me say something and then fucking bans me from that chat and i'm like yo what the fuck he's like an admin in there i told art but the art on freaking admin is ass but I'm like, yo, like, what the fuck is your problem? You know, like, if you got a fucking problem with me, fucking say something or do something, dude. I just fucking saw you at uh, one of Big E's tournaments, you know. You don't say shit. Um, and as far as, like, his history, he's always been a fucking plague, bro. He, he, he wrote, he did something. He helped out with the SRK website or something like that. And According, according to him, like, he made the entire website. According yeah, to him. so he felt like something was owed to him. So he's like freaking <laughs> trying to slander the evil people and Joey and shit. And so he's on their fucking shit list. You know, he's talked shit about Big E. So he's on their shit list, dude. Like he's he's isolated. He's putting himself in a corner pretty fast. That's that's all it is, man. He does it to himself because. And then you know another thing too. I don't know if you guys remember. Back in the day, dude, the break and ate at the break, yo, there used to be big tournaments and people from New York used to fucking come down, you know, to those freaking tournaments all the time. ECC? And yeah, nobody goes there anymore. Nobody wants anything to do with him because he's a fucking, you know, piece of shit, bro. Nobody wants anything to do with him. He Everything he touches, you know, is just freaking <laughs> decays, bro. So that's who he is. He's a freaking virgin nerd loser. Fucking living at his parents' house. Fucking. Hey, you crying. don't know he's a virgin. Don't don't be like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. This, game is talking about cat, this anime has the best music. <laughs> 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 fucking virgin. 
fucking Ew. extra virgin fucking olive oil <laughs> nerf, dude. <laughs> Seriously. And, you know, I, I know he's it. lucky that Aiden a break is fucking right across the street from a fucking police station because I will fucking, you know, I was really tempted to just walk over there and ask him what the fuck his problem was and <laughs> let him be froggy. I'll fucking... I don't know. Jaha. His, his Jaha. Jaha, I, I think you'd be the first victim of your new authority, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll ban myself. <laughs> I'll ban myself, man. I'll ban myself from all the tournaments, dude. I like that? Fuck, man. I fucking stand for what I stand for, man. It's it. Ja, you're on the ju- you're, you're on the bench judging yourself. Say, eh? well, I broke the rules. I'm bam. <laughs> I'm letting you guys know I am gonna lead by example, and I'm gonna break his neck, and then I'm gonna leave, and you need a new, and you need a new sheriff. Wow. Day one. So cold, Steve Austin shirt. A rock raised hell. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. He's, he's gonna he's gonna walk into the next tournament. And it's just gonna be like ban me. <laughs> That's it. That's-